Hey, hey, I, hey, everyone! Uh, thanks for connecting on this Sunday. Uh, we are hoping to have an amazing session with Nas. And for so basically, we are from Delhi and CR, uh, and we are from people who build. So basically, we are one of the first school, uh, no code school from India, and so we have Nas here, who has, uh, who has been in the no code industry from three to four years, and he has built. uh amazing no code tools and so one of the his uh he got an award from product hunt from for the uh product of the year uh he was a runner up and currently he is working as a product manager with uh, clipboard healthcare so yeah nas i would like to know your journey how did you got into no code and so on yeah Sure. Thanks, Ashok. Hey, everyone. Uh, Nazir, you can call me Nazir Muhammad. Uh, anything works. I'm currently at Clipboard Health, but to talk about my journey is that I was an engineering student, like a bunch of you might have gone through in India, which is a default. And I wanted to build a lot of things while I was in college, uh, but there were two problems one i was super lazy so i didn't want to really sit and code everything i wanted to build plus i had like dozens of ideas in my head so i didn't want to uh, you know just sit and code and it takes one year to build one idea and you know back like 12 years 10 yeah 10 years before it it was so hard to you know get any product out especially a tech product and uh, i i i can literally think of how my friends used to build like a simple social networking website or some simple e-commerce website as a computer science project and that would take a few months so uh, uh, i would like to know like we have the audience who are from no code or uh, so from non technical background so would you like to tell the audience about the difference between code and the no code sure so so that's why so continuing there is that You know, I came across no code, and I've been uh, playing with no code for a long time. Uh, quite frankly, no code wasn't mature ten years ago, and that's why there wasn't much like things like Appy Pie, which was still really shit, and MIT App Inventor still doesn't work that great. But there, uh, but now the no code market has matured a lot, and people are talking about it. And I built a few apps, and I'll talk about it. But especially because they're non-technical people here, I think that's that's the power of no code uh, is that. it democratizes uh, code uh, it actually i won't even say code it democratizes product building because what used to happen was uh, building tech startups and building high growth startups had become the monopoly of people who knew how to code and uh, that's why if you're not a computer science engineer it would be really hard for you to build, build a high growth startup in a place like delhi or bangalore right or even for that matter in the silicon valley Yeah. But if you have no the power of no code, so all you have to do is think of an idea, know exactly how the product works, think about the business, right? Think about what's the go-to-market strategy, what's the unit economics of the business, how am I going to build my team, you know, how do we stay ahead of competition? So think of all the things that matter. Of course, the product matters, but then you build the product by thinking of how it should function, how we should design it, how it should interact with the market, how it should interact with the customer. You don't have to think about Oh, but how do I connect to this microservice, which is also talking to another plugin, which was done by this developer? Like those are the things you should not worry about, right? And if even if you hire developers to do that, it becomes very expensive, uh, even in India. So that's why the no code has opened that opportunity for us. But we can actually show you how that can happen because people talk about it, but you don't know exactly how that happens. So, would you like to uh, sure? Tell so, yeah. please, what please, I'll do please, is, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to take stage from you, Shank, and I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to few show show people a few things I've built. Maybe that will give you an idea of like this is actually possible, right? So, let me go here, and this is pretty much my website, uh, najbuzawan.com, which is where you'll find the no-code tool selector. And here, this this local tool selector I built, actually really inspired by other people who have built really good selectors as well. 
but you can go and see, you know, if I want to build a web app or I want to build a website, a native app, workflow automation, product marketing, e-commerce. So there are tools for everything in no code, even Nas, for, yeah. Nas, uh, your screen is not visible. Oh shit, sorry. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, okay. This yeah. Fine. Now so, I can you see it. Yeah. Okay, fine. Right. So, yeah, so if you go to my website, uh, here you would see this no code tool selector. And I have these categorized by, you know, whichever thing you want to build something in games, you want to build something in voice apps, you want to do AI and data science, chatbots, everything's here. Uh, but I also, what I did was I selected them and put them into Novice, Intermediate, and Ninja because uh, things that are Novice, it, Novice means two things. One is that it's either easy for someone uh, who's new, who's novice to uh, build on it, but also novice means that the features won't be complicated enough. And if it's a ninja, that means that the features are pretty robust, which also means you, you have to learn a lot to understand how to use it. So the learning curve is pretty, pretty high. But then I would show you a few things that I built. So uh, there are a few products I built today, Argumeter. This was featured on Product Hunt. Uh, this was another one, which was number five product of the day. And there, are, there are a bunch. So these are all local tools that I built. And I'll show you a few. And these are two tools I built for others. So this was, so Vadwani Foundation actually acquired us in January. So in the in the past two years, I had been building this company called Capri Venture Basecamp. And this this is proof of that no code works. So I so so what happened was we were a foundation. We were actually a nonprofit. Uh, uh, when we started a startup, we we wanted to go the nonprofit route, and that's why we raised from people like uh, the UK and the USA, and we had a million dollars. But the operation the operations of the program is pretty operation heavy. So we thought we'll not put too much money into uh, the developers and develop the platform. So I literally built the platform all by myself in two months, which was the first version. Then we did three, four versions. And uh, well, once we built the platform and we ran the beta, the beta was pretty successful. Vadvani Foundation looked at us. And uh, within two years of starting the program, we were acquired by the foundation. And now it's a that's the website. So if you go to platform.wfglobal.org, you would be able to see of what we had built, and this was built completely on Bubble on a Nuco tool. But the other one, there was uh, there's this company called Lightified. It's a, a lights marketplace, and this company is in Dubai. Has won two startup accelerators in Dubai, and they completely built on Bubble, like completely. There is not even custom code there. But let me show you a few examples of what I built. Right, like. There, are, there is this thing like if you're really getting started into no code, now uh, you should start out with something like GlideApps.com. Uh, this helps you build PWAs. PWAs, uh, progressive web apps, are web apps which function a lot like uh, uh, native apps like Android and iOS. And so you can actually build something on the web and deploy it directly in the web, and people will use it as they will feel like it's either using a mobile app, but if you look, for example, this one I had built during COVID. So you all it does is it gives you data on each. Uh, of course, you can see that the data is now not recent because my rows were limited later on. And I can't have any more rows here of data. But what it does is it uh, tells you all the confirmed cases and you know what if there are testing labs. So it will give you all the locations of testing labs in the area. So it gives you that data, plus you can, you'll be able to track patients. So for example, if I'm in Andhra Pradesh, I can see there are eight patients there that I was able to track at that time. And I can literally go inside a patient and see, you know, notes on the patient. Even we had data on where this patient contracted this from, like which other patient they contracted this from, it was linked to that. So you could literally track if a patient had COVID, you could track it back to who they had from. And this is all built on nothing but a simple spreadsheet. So it's a Google spreadsheet. Uh, that's uh, that's where it takes all that data from. But now the question is, where does the data come from? So again, no code required. There is this amazing app called Dash Dash, and Dash Dash is a spreadsheet as an API. So you can build a spreadsheet and you can connect APIs to that spreadsheet. So all I did was I connected to code into all this API. 
through a spreadsheet on dash dash and in real time just keep sending data and this data is so let me flow quickly while it loads i'll also open the tree So you have to get early access. So that's why there's testing out things. But so all this data is here. Uh, I'll let it load. And what it does, it sends this data so to this website called PyTree. PyTree is like Zapier. So all the webs use Zapier. Uh, Zapier's workflow automation, right? You can connect different tools and send data between between different tools. But PyTree is a little more complicated. Like if there are coders in the audience, what you can do is, uh, and I'm not going to log in and show you all the code, but what you can do is you can send data from anywhere to PyTree. That data you can transform using code. Uh, this is generally Node.js code, and then you can send it to some something else. Sometimes when you send data to Zapier, you need to transform that uh, data somehow, and then you need a little custom code, which is not which you're not able to do in Zapier, so you can do it on PyTree. So I send it there, then I send it to Google Sheet using their API, comes here, and oh yeah, you have real-time data on COVID patients. Then I built another thing, again, very simple on Glide apps. It's uh, uh, the Bangalore open mic scene. Uh, you can you know, so if you're a comedy open micer, you can literally see Mondays, where does comedy happen? Uh, of course, right now, nothing's happening due to COVID. But you can see, you know, where is it happening? What type of mic it is? What's the location? You know, who is the producer who's producing it? So they can contact them and ask, and also see what are other mics that they have in the look in Bangalore. So you can contact them, say, hey, hey, can I get a spot in these mics? And great. And also, if you want to go watch, stand up in any of the rooms, then you can go basically click here, see when the open mic is happening, and go there. And we have all the production houses here, and we had a group chat feature as well where people with comics were talking. So it's pretty simple. Again, built on spreadsheet, all I had to do was put all the data of uh, the open mics, which is the production houses, the rooms, and when the mics are happening. And it just picks up that data and puts it here. And how do you build it? It's pretty simple. Like the layout, if I go back to the layout, you put something like a title. If I go try to add a component, I can add text, audio, image, and all of this stuff. Like if I put an image here, I can connect that image to something I've uploaded on a spreadsheet. So everything Glide apps work completely on a Google spreadsheet. And you can put all of this stuff there. So just using a Google spreadsheet, you can build your own app. And it also allows login. And so someone can actually sign up to your app, and they will have their own views. So everything is doable here using Glide. Um, so but what I will show you is the most powerful, powerful thing that I built on Gliders, which are featured on Prime, was this app. It's called Twitter Argumenter. The idea was that, so those of you who would know Andrew Chen, Andrew Chen, ex Uber, he was the investor in, um, in a bunch of companies actually, but he's right now with Anderson Horowitz. And uh, so he, goes on Twitter on several times and he went on Twitter and said, hey, I want to know on Twitter why, who is a person that I'm talking to who likes to argue. Just put like an, this person likes to argue flag on them because then I know that this person just argues for the sake of arguing so that I don't waste my time on Twitter. I was like, well, this is something that's doable no code, so let's try it out. So what I did was I just fired up a Glide app and, uh, but there are a few things that I needed to do. So Right now, let me show you first what this does. So I'm going to make a bait out of uh, my friend Adam Walker. And so I can go in here, see what's this Twitter bio like. Is it a verified profile or not? And this is his argument profile. So he's a social drinker. So he likes to argue a lot. Uh, and I'll show you. So I had four profiles. So there was a social drinker. Street Fighter is the most dangerous. Then less than that is social drinker. Then there's pressure cooker. And I think I don't remember what was the best one, but that the four profiles. And what it also shows you is what was the, how many percentage of his tweets are common. So he likes to, more half of his tweets are common. So he likes to comment on people a lot. 
also it tells you what was his most negative comment ever that he made to someone and also it shows you what was the most positive so you can see that he was pretty angry on loom video saying that your stuff is broken and also i can see his most positive comment was math is a symbolic logic so you need the key to understand it so that is most positive and i can of course click and directly go to the tweet if i want if it's given this tweet it will take a tweet so it does sentiment analysis and does that right now how do i get to all of this stuff and i had a separate section for street fighters this is basically this is something that helps you find out who are trolls so someone who is actually uh, working on how to find trolls on twitter this is a logic that will work very well for you now how did i do this uh, it actually took connecting a few no code tools so the front end was here the front end was easy to build so it's just text and links and you know, all of that stuff so you title text form button separator but what I do is I click and check another user. I put the Twitter handle here. And when I put the Twitter handle, this is the spreadsheet that this app is connected to. And uh, when I ask for someone's data, it goes to, it just puts this data in this spreadsheet called profile request. And that's all easily connectable through client apps. So someone actually checked SRK a few days ago. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so it sends the handle here. I'm, I'm really interested to see what Sarkis profile came up as. But anyway, so it uh, sends this data to, to this spreadsheet. Now, this spreadsheet is actually connected to Zapier. So people who have used Zapier, geez, SRK, anyways, I'm getting distracted. So uh, people, no, I'm going to check. If it's there. Yes. What was his most negative comment ever? Hope the spread of the virus subsides and the show can go on. BCC and team owners in consultation with the government. Okay, he was pretty pissed at something. So we'll check on later. But what happens is it goes to the spreadsheet and then it will connect to Zapier. So what Zapier look at is that, hmm, so this person, uh, okay, let's go back. Yeah, so what Zapier looks for is that whenever a new day row is created on the street, Zapier sends a webhook. So I have a zap for that. So yeah, this one is the zap. Close. So whenever a new spreadsheet uh, row is com comes in my spreadsheet, it posts a webhook to something called. Uh, Naz, yeah. uh, Naz, your voice is cracking in between. Can we uh, do something for that? Uh, is it fine now? Yes, yes, yes. Everything is good. So uh, cool. just to add on here, the audience, uh, guys, you can uh, react to the what Naz is doing. And uh, you can also raise your hand from the right side so that we can take up the questions in the uh, question answer and query uh, session. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, please carry on. Awesome. So, yeah. so basically, it sends a webhook to Parabola. Now, pra Parabola is another no-code app, which is also used for workflow automation. It's also pretty cool. So it made a post request to Parabola. Mm, this was my post request. And then this is Parabola. Now, this is where the juice of the whole app is. So you can go into Parabola and let's open our editor. And you can connect a bunch of apps, get data from all these apps at the one place in Parabola and do a bunch of maths with it, uh, sentiment analysis and everything. So this is Parabola, right? And if I come to the beginning of Parabola, come on, load. Yeah, it's a pretty big flow. So I cannot go through the flow, but I'll show you what the outcome is. All right, so while it explodes, I'll explain what happens. So then when the webhook is sent to Parabola, what Parabola does is it sends a request to Twitter API. So in the no code space, one more thing to learn is that to very, very important to learn is APIs. If you know how to do a get and a post API, that's very good to start with. And how you can read APIs, because APIs are the way you connect to different tools. So basically what I do is as soon as the webhook comes in, 
I connect to Twitter API and then what Twitter API does is it goes and looks for all the tweets. So this is the Twitter API that I've connected. For example, someone look for Donald Trump. It will go and look for all of Donald Trump's tweets and then it will so basically it comes as JSON. So it flatters that JSON and basically converts it uh, into table. And then what I did was I took all of the tweets, found out which of the tweets were comments. And then I, you, you can see here, there's a sentiment analysis that I did. So once I got all the tweets on Parabola, what you can do is change the table, transform it, do a lot of like spreadsheet work on over here, get all the tweets, put it into a sentiment analysis table and sentiment analysis will tell you if it's a positive or a negative text and it will give you a plus one, minus one uh, uh, score between that. So I got that score, then did a little bit of maths, then Based on that maths, I was able to tell what's the average sentiment of all your comments, which one is a worst tweet and which one is a best tweet. Then got all that data, joined it, created profile. So this is where all those four profiles are created in this workflow. So just like if your score is between this and this, then you're, you are a street fighter. If your score is between this and this, you're a pressure cooker or you're a social drinker and you're a friendly leader. So these were the kind of profiles that we have. I think there was another one, right? Anyways, let's move on. And a moderator, yeah. So I had five profiles here. Let me close this now. And then I sent all of this data to a Google sheet that I already had here, which Glide Apps was doing data from. And you can see all the user data is coming from Parabola. And using this user data, my Twitter argumenter app does this simple thing in the background where you can see all of these users and you can see all their Twitter argumenter profile analysis. And once, and the other thing that I did, so there was also a growth hack that I built for this so that a lot of users would come in and use it. So I also built this uh, CPA first. So whenever someone checks your profile, so let's say object IMS Arcus profile, it actually creates a tweet and it sends a GIF to that person saying, Hey, SRK, someone just checked how much you like to argue on Twitter using the Argumenter app. And the Argumenter profile says that your worst Twitter comment ever was this. And so see what they found out. And this person's like, Oh my God, where did they find this comment? And what else did they find out about me? And they're going to go and check <laughs> into Twitter Argumenter, uh, which, uh, which is a kind of growth hack, which keeps the en engagement cycle. Long. So this was a sim very simple no-code app that took me about six hours in total to build. But if you were trying to build something as complicated like this using code, I can bet it's at least worth six weeks of a sprint. Uh, we given the amount of work it will take in connecting all of these pieces and building the front end and building the back end, uh, which I could do over a weekend. And there are things like, so this is not something I built, but this is also something cool, which AirDev built. Uh, they run another no-code agency. They build on Bubble. And they built Twitter completely on no-code. So you can do, uh, you can go to nottwitter.com and go and sign in as a fake user and you'll see everything right that's my fake profile so you can follow people you can tweet you can bookmark literally everything and i remember when the first time these people built the twitter clone it took them not more than like a few hours to build the whole thing Also, no code. You can do like really crazy stuff. Like I used, um, I, I was getting bored in uh, quarantine when when I uh, came back from Europe and I was in quarantine. So I was like, let's let's build something. And so I built using the spreadsheet and because it's connected to API, I built a trivia game. So this actually like, if I click on the link, like over here. So this is literally a spreadsheet that uh, has a trivia game. It's like a calculated score, gives you a random trivia question collected from the internet, and everything comes from 
a very, very simple workflow, literally built on a spreadsheet, where I'm getting data through an API, parsing it, and then basically connect. Uh, I'm also calculating points. And here it is, colorful creatures. I don't know. So it may look more blue. This is the name of the largest North American swallow. I have no clue what it means. Incorrect. The purple martin. Okay, got it. So yeah, that's some of the stuff I built. Uh, one last thing that I will show you that I built um, was this tool called Works for All. So this is the one. This also got pretty much works on. Hunt. So works for all is a very simple tool. Uh, this this literally came up when I was talking to someone. We were trying to set up a meeting, and this person said, "Hey, what's the central place for you?" And I was like, "What's the central place for you? And can we meet at this cafe? Or can we meet at that cafe?" And I was like, "Why are we going back and forth? There should actually be an app for this." And I actually built it uh, optimized for more uh, the phone. So I'm gonna use a phone view to show you this. Let me see if I remember my password. Oh, I do. OK. So what you, you do is it's pretty simple. Like, you type an address. So I live in Hanover in Bangalore. Let's put that in here. All right, got it. Let's add this address. Let's say my friend who is coming is it's an MG Road in Bangalore. And we're going to add that address. And maybe we have a third friend coming who lives in Indranagar. And we can also put like exact dates because it's Google Maps, so why not? Uh, exact addresses, sorry. So now we have three addresses. Uh, do we want to meet for Chinese or cafe? No, let's, let's meet at a cafe. And there you go. So these are some cafes in that area that it's suggesting based on our location. And I can basically the favorite some of these places. I can find them on Google. I can locate them on the map. So it will actually send a request to this map and look, tell me where exactly this place is. Or I can share this uh, link with my friend. And they can come and find this uh, link and say, OK, let's go come meet it at this cafe. So it makes life easier. It's a simple app. Uh, also, you can view things that you've favorited before. So you know, oh, we went to this cafe at that time. So let's, let's meet there. And I can, again, locate things on the map if I want. But this is built, again, this I built in a day on something called Bubble. And everything from front, so the front end is pretty simple. Uh, it's not really neat as well. <laughs> Some of the designers would be like cringing on this. But the back end is uh, it's connected to Google Maps, it's connected to Mapbox API, um, and does all of, and also it has some maths. It has a sign cost because if you have to find a central location, the coordinate location, the geographical location, so you have to do a little maths. But that maths also I put into a JavaScript uh, container. And then the whole app was done. So this is what you can do with no code. But I would love to hear any questions. Uh, yes, uh, Rishab, can we take some questions? So yeah, uh, we have. So first of all, we have a question. Like, uh, so we can take up, take it up. Then we can uh, take the question from the raise hand options. And so. First is, hey, Naz, uh, how you choose between different apps from different features? I think uh, it's uh, it's not just features. You first need to understand what are you trying to build, right? If yeah. it's something that needs a lot of API calls, then choose a no-code tool that supports APIs very well. If it's something, for example, I'll tell you, for example, if I have to choose between Glide apps for building uh, why did I not build works for all on Glide apps? Because Glide apps anyways gives a good design. But why did I build it not bubble? The reason was that I needed to do a lot of JavaScript because I needed to do some maths and also I needed to connect some APIs, which Glide apps doesn't do out of the box. 
So if you know exactly what you need to build, then you can do see, walk backwards from there and say that, okay, these are the things that I will need to build for this. And then walk backwards and sit there and see, okay, these are some of the no code tools that actually support this. Sometimes it's a hit and trial. Like you would hit a roadblock in one of the tools and say, oh, I think it, I cannot build it in this. Let's try another one. Okay, so sum it up. It's like first, you know, you need to know the requirements and then the tool. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Don't start from the tool because the thing is, no tool is perfect. Uh, every no tool, no code tool has been built for some reason, and everyone has the pros and cons. So whatever fits your use case. I, I don't use one no code tool. I'm a fan of Bubble, but I use four to five no code tools based on what works. Okay. Cool. Uh, Rishabh, can we take the uh, questions from Rezan? Yeah, please. Uh, I think there are some more open questions in this one as well now. Yeah. So all these are all these no code tools are open source? No. Uh, actually, a very, very few. I would say rarely you will find no, no code tool being open source because their business use case is uh, they actually earn because they are not open source. Uh, they really earn on the premium. Uh, tech, tech that's behind the no-code software. Although there are a few courageous people who have made it open source. There is a guy who is my friend uh, who used to be product manager at CureFit and now he's built his own company. It's called appsmith.com. It's an internal tool builder just like Retool, but it's completely open source. Okay. So uh, just for the audience, what is a no-code? So what, sorry, no-code open source. Yeah. Uh, no code open source is basically um, you build a no code tool builder. So it's meta because you have to build a tool to build code. Uh, but then very few people actually give you access to the code that actually builds code. And uh, that's what open source is. So if you go to appsmith.com, so actually, if you search for appsmith on GitHub, you'll find that repo and you can go and contribute. And you can actually, if, you, if you're a coder, if you're an engineer, go and look at the backend. It's built on Node, I guess, and you'll be able to understand how to build a no code tool using that. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, hey guys. Uh, so, if you have any further questions, just raise your hand. We have Hirain here. Uh, I'm handing him the mic. Uh, and anyone else, just raise your mic. Uh, sorry, raise your hand, and I'll hand the mic. Hey, hi, guys. I think there are a few questions in chat as well. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, yes we can uh, take it further. Uh, yeah, Hiren, hi. Hey, hi. So, uh, Nash, thanks for the you know the good stuff which you went by. And I see that uh, you talking about you know dash dash and uh, the other you know it was glide if I'm not wrong, right? So basically, just wanted to know what would be the difference between Bubble and these you know app. I know it's this is spreadsheet one and that is more like it does a complete UI UX still you know. Uh, to, uh, you know, till the integration front, that's the major difference I feel between these two apps. But if I want to do something like an, uh, you know, magicwaves.com or an Airbnb or something, can I do everything? Because is there a phone integration there in this app? And which one is the best one? I mean, like, I'm just, uh, because I was start going, I started Figma. I've done my part design there. I learned about Bubble. Now I'm stuck and saying I would want to do again the design on Bubble. There's, a, uh, you know, integration there with Bubble and Figma. I'm going to use that, but now, now I'm hearing about these two apps, and I see that you know uh, the CEO of Twitter has also said that you know GetSlide is quite good. So I'm just uh, curious to know that you know what can what should I do and where should I focus now? Um, so it depends on what kind. So whenever you're choosing a no-code tool, again, look at two levels. Uh, the first level is what industry or what kind of tool I'm building. And the second is uh, look at what kind of functionality do I need. So, for example, if I'm coming from this section like industry, I want to build, let's say, an e-commerce app, which is a web app, or I do want to build a mobile app. Now, if you're trying to build a web app only, then something like Bubble would be good, but then you look at the features. Uh, if you're trying to build a mobile app only, then you could use Adlo, DraftPit, um, also Bubble, and wrap it later on using some kind of nativizer. But uh, you first have to decide what features you're looking for. But for your specific use case, Magic Bricks or Airbnb, Bubble actually has a course um, uh, that teaches you exactly how to build a code clone of Airbnb. Um, uh, but then, sorry. yeah. Sorry to yeah, interrupt. Yeah. 
uh, sorry to interrupt here, but uh, we have an announcement related to the course part here. Uh, in, sure. Yep. Anyways, yeah. So yeah, I would say for Bubble, it's uh, if you're trying to build Airbnb, build it on Bubble. If you're trying to build the mobile app of Airbnb separately, then build it on Adlo. If you're trying to build the whole experience together, build it on Bubble and need to wrap it in some kind of nativizer. And then later, Risha will tell you how to learn Bubble and how to build it. So bonus for you. So, that, so then what would be this get slides and you know dash dash be useful for? These are more from corporate uh, you know companies and they can do it for small automation tasks. So, Is that what I write? So, so for example, if you go to my no code tool selector, I think it will be pretty clear. So for example, dash dash is a spreadsheet tool. It's a spreadsheet with API. So something, for example, let's say you want to keep an eye on stocks, right? Then you would connect to a stock API and it will keep generating the stock API in a spreadsheet. So imagine if you're you are using Google Sheets or you're using Excel and you're like, I just wish this data could be real time, right? So that what dash dash is useful for, or if you get slides, I haven't used get slides, but I'm pretty sure it's if it's related to slides, then the use case is there. But that's why you have to understand. You want to build a web, web app, native app, slide app, spreadsheet app, everything differs. Sure. And you said bubble and one more, uh, you know, I mean, one more app. What was that? The second one? Mm, add a look. A-D-A-L-O. So, uh, Hiren, so basically we have something uh, for you all uh, in the bonus session and you will get to know all the uh, tools from that. We have a surprise for you. Don't worry about the tools. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yep. Uh, so anyone else? Uh, we have a couple of questions in the questions tab. Uh, there's one. Can we predict the topics for Twitter tweets the same as sentiment analysis using Parabola? Can we predict? Yeah, predict the topics for Twitter tweets uh, the same as sentiment analysis by using Parabola. Um, I I'm not sure if Parabola has uh, put in a predictive engine in it yet. Uh. If you're not able to do it there, you will probably have to connect to an AI no-code tool. The good thing is there are no, no no-code AI tools. So there are things like Clarify that, so you can literally train your own machine learning algorithm there and uh, uh, you can create the predictive engine and then you could feed all Twitter topics into it and that predictive engine will tell you what to do. Like there is very one, very good, uh, a very good tool built a Google spreadsheet uh, that does predictive analytics. It's called asanai.com. Okay, cool. Uh, the next question from the chat box is basically the which tool uh, would you ideal uh, for a matchmaking portal idea? Basically, he wants to build a match more uh, portal. For matchmaking portal, I think you want to do a native app because you would want to want people to have it on the phone most of the times. Someone has actually built Tinder on Glide apps. Uh, okay. So you don't even have to go native. You can do it on PWA. So you can check that out. I think they have a template as well uh, somewhere. And uh, else, I would say use Adlo. So so much simpler to build it there. Yeah, I think Adlo should be enough. I don't want to quote any other tools for now. Yeah. Uh, okay. So second is, how do you get started with building apps? How do we get started with building apps? Um, that's a very broad question. <laughs> but uh, the thing what you have to understand is that building an app is not just about knowing a tool, yeah. but building an app is also about knowing how, what to build and how to build with a tool, right? Because a any tool you pick, you need to understand what is a good data structure. So a little bit of computer science is very good. Um, you need to understand what is good design. So you should have good design skills. You need to understand what is the optimal way of running a workflow. You can run a workflow 10 different different types, even on no-code tools. And you have to understand what's the optimal way of doing it. So first, understand that piece. So read a little bit of computer science. You don't have to get into the code space, but understand how algorithms work. And then, again, think of your requirements, what kind of features you want to build, what tools will support that, start building. There's no other way to do it. Awesome. And next is what specs do you need to know? What 
specs do you need to know oh yes specifications see you don't need to write specs uh what i would suggest is there is a very good practice from amazon which i use in my new company as well it's called a working backwards document or you could also look for pr faq process and what it helps you understand is that imagine that you launched your product today and it went to the market and newspapers are talking about it customers are talking about it so you literally have to type out the testimonials and the pr article that would go out in the newspapers and that will give you a great idea of what success of my product looks like and then start building backwards from there so if i want this success what metrics do i need to could look at if i need to hit these metrics what kind of features will give me these metrics if i need these kind of features then how do i build it what's the use case scenarios and then from there you would be able to understand what tool you need to build yeah cool uh, okay one more question we have uh, once we have a product using no code tool while we uh, while we are de uh, debugging the bugs it will be difficult uh, we won't be making the product from scratch using two codes also if we would be using multiple tools will it be difficult to maintain like what he means to say is like uh, you have you have built the code on no code and you have to debug some bugs uh, basically the debugging process and you are using multiple tools uh, to debug it is it difficult after, uh, for maintaining it for a future or longer so, so, so i feel the pain of a developer behind this question yeah <laughs> uh yes so first of all when you're talking about debugging uh no code in itself uh, is very self contained um which means that a lot of things won't be even allowed for you to do because they know that it's going to throw an error so 80% of the debugging is done a lot of debugging happens either if you have injected your own custom code or if you have built a workflow in a non business uh, compliant way or if you have built a design and non business compliant way and that's a design debugging process or there's a workflow debugging process which is where some no code tools like bubble they provide a debugger where you can actually check step by step when i click on this what is exactly happening in the back end or in the front end okay so uh, it depends on the kind of tool you use also from if you're using multiple tools for debugging um, i don't think first of all for no code tools you will be allowed to use a different tool to debug that tool unless you're trying to look at website optimization which is out of their control uh, but if you're using multiple debugging tools i don't see a problem because you won't be allowed anyway so why to worry about it? okay uh, the last question we have is uh, can you give the, a basic high level overview uh, what are the various section of a of this field the future of this he is talking about of this field oh of being a no code person yeah from from a job perspective right mm, i guess no like basics he's saying uh <laughs> yes do you want to come on the stage you can just raise your hand and we'll take it further uh okay yeah, yeah. you can come okay come so guys uh do we have another questions you guys okay, can we, raise your hand we we can take one more question yeah. uh, after this and then we'll have to begin with mayank session so uh, i think there was another question, question and tools uh, yeah. in the questions section uh yeah in which tool we can uh, we can link to databases open source Like this is a very cold question, but <laughs> but anyways, I'll give you an answer. There's a tool called Back for App, uh, not open source, sorry, um, but it's still Back uh, Back for App is a headless server, or you could say it's a headless backend, and uh, you can build your front end on no code. And what you can do is because if you want a very scalable backend, you use Back for App. It's a parse based platform. and using a rest api or using the javascript sdk you can just uh, talk to the db so yeah. that's how it can work and you can literally build two dbs and make them talk uh, i would say the best ke the best way to make two databases talk is either through a rest api especially in the no code space or if you can kind of use a js sdk then that's great yeah cool so uh, 
I would like to add on with the uh, de- the question you we take about the debugging process. I think that is the power of no code. Like it's cutting down the time and the money which we are spending on debugging while uh, we have hired some developers. What he is doing every day is building something and he is uh, solving that he is debugging the the code the bugs he he has to solve the bugs in daily basis and that's take a lot of time i guess like i was a developer yep. and i know this pain uh, of debugging a code like you have an error in like uh, so the code the builder always tell you the uh, the problem is in this line like a uh, hundredth line but the problem is never with the hundredth line it will be in the 500 line or something or maybe in some other library so debugging is a, a skill i i would say okay i see i think a last question which is what are cons of opting for no code um again because there are different tools which can uh, allow different features so you can probably build take up a tool which where you'll hit a roadblock that for example if you use something like webflow to try to build a web app you won't be able to do web app stuff like storing in database and getting people to sign up and store their custom data so those are some cons and that's why uh, you have to be a very smart person when you're building a complete product thinking that you know 80% of my product can be built on no code and then 20% of it Uh, i'll have to extend either using code or extra tools or extra automations but you have to be very smart about thinking of no code as just an ide which fills 80% of my stuff could you build incremental features of an app using no code over existing code base yes uh, if you're a developer you will definitely understand it or a product person that everything is built using microservices and modules so you can literally build like if you have 150 microservices that you are trying to build you can build 120 of them on no code and then build 30 of them over code or if you have already 100 built then build the rest of the 50 over no code so just build them as microservices it's good product practice in general that build everything as modules and as microspaces very loosely integrated and then connect them through an api or through a plugin or through an sdk so we have a message from yash he won't be able to join uh, from the desktop so don't worry yash you can just connect with uh, nas on linkedin on mail and you can get your answer yeah and so it's time to end nas's session and we'll move ahead with uh, mangs but uh, no worries nas will be available in the networking post event for some time and you can uh, ask any questions you have there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just end the session and we can begin with the next one. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Awesome. We are live again. And we have Mayank on the stage. So I would like to introduce Mayank. Uh, he is one of my elder brother. And he is one of the co-founder of People Who Build. And so basically, he has given the future and uh, taught different designers and no coders. Like the, if I talk about the numbers, he has taught five more than 500 students uh, and teaching more of them. So yeah, please, uh, Mayan. Thank you, Jaya, for the introduction. I think like I don't have much to share in this session because most of it is already covered by NAS. But definitely, I'll, I'll show you a little bit about no code and uh, the Indian aspect of it because not just teaching no code, we also run a, like a no code studio in India, in Delhi. And being a non technical person, uh, studied like in electrical engineering, like I'm an electrical engineer by background. So, like, I'm still building uh, different uh, applications and like, all of it like without code. So, mainly, I'll be talking about uh, how non-coders, because I'm also a non-coder, can build software, not just small, but a, a, a pretty big software. Okay, so, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to share my screen. Um, it is let me know once it's available, right? Is it available? Yes. Right, so, yeah, like, I was talking about, like, okay, so, B, I am, like, started a no-code studio called People First Design in Delhi. 
and we basically help people to build software without code and pretty much it's successful pretty much because it's been a year and uh, we had a lot of revenue out of it and uh, uh, i built like very complex software uh, including this particular website as well uh, without code and uh, yeah so these are like some of the projects that we had covered and the all of these company that i'm going to show is an indian company and and also talk about some of the Indian companies that are using uh, no code heavily and how they are getting benefit from it. And we are also like one of the studios that are uh, practically best in uh, no code. Okay. So uh, uh, how I came into no code space very simple like that. I wanted to build product because uh, I I had the like crazy idea. Okay, let's build this. Let's build this. But I was like crippled every time I wanted to uh, build something. I needed to ask my friends. Uh, one of them is in the call, Prati. So I needed to call him. I needed to call uh, other people. Okay, how do I build it? And in most of the cases, the idea that I had requires code. And uh, that was the, like uh, one of the reasons why I thought, okay, I need to find a solution for this problem. So again, uh, as like any other entrepreneur, any other person, me, I, I go to Google and I like search it. How to build software without code? So I didn't. No, that like it was possible. And then I, I came across some of the very crazy tools, like some of them is already kind of mentioned by Nash. And uh, I got to know, okay, there is so much of it that I can build. There's so much, so many ideas that I was not able to build, but now I'm able to build it. So one of that tools, I'll say my favorite tool, and uh, the tool that I'm pro in is that no. Yeah, this is a, I'll say, no code tool that's practically helping uh, small companies, including ours. And including uh, different design studios across India to build websites without code. So previously, people used to like build websites using code or maybe using WordPress. Like so, that's not basically uh, I, I said an advanced version of WordPress, and it's like WordPress that's on uh, steroids. Like so it's very popular and very powerful. If you're a designer, you must, you may already know how to build that tool. So, okay, uh, it's loading. Okay, so. So this is a notebook tool that's like very, very powerful and is being used by big companies, uh, including Dell, Facebook, and NASA. So this is again a very powerful notebook tool that, that is being mainly used for building websites. I'm going to show some of the examples of uh, website that we have built. So that, this is a company called Zoho Day. Uh, it, it's a company in Bangalore. It's basically an HR. They're, basically, their product is SaaS was product. Focus mainly on employee engagement and uh, sales. So this is a, the whole website that you're going to see is built without code. And I, I, it's built on a tool called Webflow that I, I think I already show you. And this, you see, this website has more than like million users. And all the million users are handled by no code. So there is no limitation. All the design, customizations, everything is possible to that particular tool. Uh, and we also kind of uh, recently we built another product called as uh, Discover Fin. We are going to uh, launch it soon, but yeah, this is another product, and this is again built on no code, built on Webflow. Uh, I'm going to show you some other things. Right. Okay. Maybe like right. again, if you are a designer, you already know how to design it on Figma, and if you already know how to design then it's very easy to build uh, to build projects like this. And everything that you're going to see are more or less built using no code. So it's again another project that we have built on this. And I'm going to show another project. So it's like uh, I'll be really focusing on all the Indian companies. So all of all of the very that you're seeing, whether it's Solar Day, whether it's Discover Sim, whether it's Kite.work. So again, Kite is a financial company located in Delhi, India. And they basically provide prepaid card to different companies to save tax. And like, because like, if you see all the food cards and uh, other Sodexo cards, so this is a company Kite, which provides all those Sodexo cards and cards to uh, different people. And if you see this particular website again, this website is again built on Webflow, uh, another no good tool. So like, uh, there are like countless examples, countless number of projects that we have built uh, using no code. These are like some of them. And this is another company called as Decoder. Okay. Yeah. Again, it's a tech startup which is basically helping our students to get 
trained in data science and AI. So again, this whole website, whole program, everything that you're seeing, uh, again, built on no code. Uh, I'm doing some uh, so uh, this is my most recent project that I built. Again, it was again focused on Indian market. So it was basically a COVID-19 chatbot that I had built on a tool called as Landbot. This is a tool Landbot. Uh, I'll show you uh, about that as well. But this is a basically a, a tool that is mainly focused on uh, telling people, okay, which, which is our nearest site and uh, whether you have COVID or not, right? Because I know like when, when COVID started in May, basically uh, like in March, right? So, I built that particular product in March and it has been used by 60,000 people till now. And I don't know like if, if it makes difference uh, in the people's life or not, but even if like two or three people get benefit from it, I, I think my in intention of building a product is successful, right? So, so I just built this uh, particular chatbot over a night. So on Friday, we thought, okay, uh, COVID is coming and people are not aware about it. Let's build something to make people aware about it. So basically we built this particular chatbot in seven to eight languages. So, uh, so you see everything that time it's coming from a Google sheet. All right, so yeah. So this is whatever that you're seeing in the chatbot is uh, is in Google sheet. I've also like converted most of the text like from English to Spanish to Hindi to Bengali to Marathi to Punjabi to Tamil and to like all other languages within Google sheet. Right? Again, even for convert converting converting like different languages, we don't need to Google already have a Function called as Google Translate, you can use it. So Google Sheet is again a very powerful tool that you can uh, use for creating databases for doing all the mathematical calculations. You definitely don't need any other tool for it. All those languages that you see in the chatbot, including English, is again just sits on the Google Sheet. And then I'm using a tool called a Landbot to connect it to finally have a chatbot like this. Yeah. So you can you can also test it. Right? Uh, it's a little outdated now, but yeah, it was. Pretty popular when it got launched. Um, then again, I talk about a tool called a Landbot. So basically, Landbot is a tool that helps you to build different chatbots, even a chatbot for your website. It can be a chatbot that you're using in uh, WhatsApp, right? So if you see different companies like OYO and Cred and HDF banks, all of all of them right now are, are sending you notifications in WhatsApp, right? So because we use WhatsApp day in and day out. So you don't actually can only build a product, but you can also take care of the engagement part of it. You can also take care of the uh, going actually close to the uh, customer. So Landbot is one of the no good tool that can, maybe you can use with Bubble or maybe with some other no good tool and engage people and make sure that people are coming back to the, your platform or the product that you're building. So these are like different levels of, uh, as a multiple chat button are built in past couple of months. So most of them are uh, COVID related. Most of them are uh, focused on WhatsApp and on different particular languages. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I think Naz already showed you Instagram, right? So I built a basically Instagram clone uh, within a tool called Glide. So it, 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 it's like my Instagram, uh, just because I wanted to build something. So I was learning it basically Glide at that time. So I thought, okay, what is the one app that I use daily? I thought, okay, I use Instagram daily. Why not that, that sign built Instagram? So we basically built a clone of Instagram, major functionality like post, comment, profile, connecting, and doing the chat, everything within the client. And you can now post the images. I'll share the link if you want to try. It's not open yet for public, but yeah. It will take some time because uh, it's more or less a free plan, but yeah. So now, uh, if, you see, if you are a very active follower on product and you'll see a lot of people, like, uh, like, like, like I made this Instagram template. There's a new project that was on the product and that were trending last two, three days back. It was photos of your uh, native area. So maybe I belong to Delhi. I'm posting all the photos of Delhi. And any traveler who's coming to Delhi, they can see all the areas in the Delhi. So the implementation ideas and, uh, and the dreams are like countless. Like people, you can, uh, so uh, I think, uh, very common question that uh, a, a lot of people ask. I know you, you may also have, what can I do with no code? So most of the things I think uh, Nas showed you, but my belief is like, uh, if you think, if you can think it, you can build it. So, so some people think, can I build it? Uh, should I build it? Uh, what is the possibility? So the possibilities are endless, right? You, you, you just have an idea, right? 
you have an idea, you know what your dream is, and you can practically build it using no-code. Maybe not the finished version, but definitely you can test it, you can build it. And uh, once enough people are on your platform, right, so you can always move away and build it on code. So no-code is helping you to complete your ideas, helping you to build the product that you always wanted to build. Again, I made another uh, simple example, but in Slack. So I teach in design mode. Uh, design mode is a UI which I, I teach design there. So one of the major components I had there was that I have to take attendance. Every time I have to take a class, I have to take attendance. So I thought I somehow need to manage the attendance because that attendance I also have done to mail people. So I just built a simple slide app on tracking attendance. It basically has a list of all the students. You select, okay, and attendance in bar. So it's very simple, right? It's very simple use case, but it saved me time because using another Excel sheet and uh, creating all those things it, you know, was a kind of pain for me. So I built it. And, it, and like I, we have actually built more than around 50 to 60 products and websites uh, through Webflow the tool and like these are some of the projects that we have built. Yeah, so that so like uh, at the end I'll say that okay, if you can like uh, dream something, if you have an idea, you can practically uh, build it using uh, no code. And yeah, so like as Nas mentioned, Adalo, Adalo is like one of the popular tools in terms of mobile app building. But if you are a business and if you are like very serious about creating apps like Airbnb or maybe creating apps like Zomato, then I'll recommend Buildfire. Buildfire is like Adalo but more powerful, and you can also customize. Uh, design. The only con of this particular tool is that it's uh, very costly. It's like around sixty to seventy dollars per month. But if you're running a business, sixty seven to dollars uh, is not much if, if if you get uh, like most of the users. But if you're just planning as a hobby project, then I'll not recommend this tool. But if you're running a business or if you're running a design studio like we are running, you you can practically use this tool. It, it's tried and tested, and uh, it's it's practically one of the best local tools. For uh, creating mobile applications. Yeah, all right. So uh, I, I'll talk less. I, I'll share example is because I think you already have seen a lot of different examples and different projects that can be built using no code. So I think I, I, I can take most of the questions now because so, uh, all, all before, of this. Yeah. Before that, uh, I would like to know uh, and. We would we uh, we I think we should tell the audience what's the future of this no code. All right, so okay, like before uh, talking about no code, okay, let, let's see. Uh, people are now talking about like code, right? Because if you see, even uh, our government of India has launched a policy, right? That uh, coding is compulsory for from students from class six, maybe from class seven. I don't know exactly the class, but it, it's compulsory for uh, for students now from the school. So some people still believe that uh, coding is the future of of the industry, right? So, but my belief and uh, what I believe is that uh, it's not going to be the future because coding is there from more than 30 years, maybe more than that. And uh, it's difficult, right? So, and, and the part is not everyone needs to learn code, right? Because if you have an idea, you practically just want to build it. You just want to see, okay, you just want it to come into life. Whether you're building it with code or whether you're building it with no code, the idea should be built. Like that, that's the objective. So I think uh, a wave of creators is going to come so soon. A wave of micro entrepreneurs, micro entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that uh, don't need a billion dollars or million dollars of funding. Entrepreneurs that just need to build products so that they can support themselves and their family. Right. So uh, I see a seen a wave of entrepreneurs, micro entrepreneurs like us, like we are running a design studio, wall studio, are coming up, and all of this will be possible just because of low code. So I, I think the future is very bright, and. Uh, and I think like uh, you can uh, like be on this no code uh, field right now, or or you can jo join later as well. Like, but but I believe that it's better to be first uh, than than to like uh, be a sheep uh, in, in, on, on all the like all the people and will be there, right? So even if you take example of YouTube, Instagram, there were some influencers, right? They, they come to the platform first, and now they are there to stay. They are the one who's leading the, those platforms. So the same will be happen with the no code. It's better to start now. It's better to start early than to like uh, face. Okay, I could have done something, but I was not. So I think the future is very bright. 
and this is the time for those micro influencers for those creators uh, to come especially in time of covid when we have a lot more time now because we saved a lot of time in travel right so yeah okay awesome so uh, uh, there are some people who are asking about the course uh, which they can take on this uh, no code training so i have an announcement amazing announcement to uh, tell you all so basically i need to share my screen first of all then i'll uh, share okay. the news yes can you uh, see my screen man awesome theek hai so this co so basically we are building we were building a course for like 2 years before and it's been a journey and after gathering all the data and all the knowledge we always wanted to share with you guys and the audi all the people so that you can make awesome products so basically we made a uh, training sessions uh, which we are starting from 19th september so basically the website uh, you need you can enroll on that is bootcamp.peoplewho.build i'll share it in the uh, chat but don't worry about that so basically i'll go through the website and the whole process if you want to uh, enroll please feel to join us and if you have any queries before joining please reach out to mayank nas rishab or me yeah so basically you can directly go to this button and you will be directly directed to the payment gateway section otherwise you want to read about which person can enroll in this like if you are a founder or a marketer or a or a designer developer student whatever you just need to know that you have a passion and you want to build something so we have showcased some of the examples some of the inspirations what product you can build through no code and so nas and mayank will be taking the all the classes they will be your mentors and they will be uh, helping you to build the product from a to z and we will be helping you guys also on the marketing side how we do the marketing in the pro in the field and rishab is one of the guy who is uh, the perfect guy on the marketing field and uh, so yeah do you want to add something man uh ha no man you should you should go ahead i was basically uh, okay like so why this board cam right so the question comes why this board cam uh, and the reason was very simple like right? when we actually started uh, our studio like that was one and a half year back not very like uh, as a very old but when we started studio we started building like different softwares and a lot more consultants entrepreneurs were coming back to us okay like how do you do that so we thought okay we somehow need to like share this knowledge and we thought okay let's build something Where we can actually build this, build a platform where we can actually uh, teach people. So previously, we have been like testing all those tools. Uh, we have been conducting. And I say this is our more than 40th workshop. We don't take money from people yet, and uh, we started like doing free events on Webflow on different no code tools across Delhi NCR, and it it kind of got like very popular. And uh, we didn't know that how, what to do it, and uh, there was like a lot more demand. And and also there was a challenge that we were seeing basically that hundred people register, then fifty people come on the session, then finally twenty people come on a day one, and ten people come on day two, and then finally ten people build a product. So basically you are observing the same pattern again and again and again and again, and it kind of like uh, the motivates us because we are doing everything for free. And that that's when we thought, okay, why should I uh, do, it, do it for free? Because if it is kind of uh, helping people. If it is basically helping businesses, and if people want, actually want to take it serious, uh, they somehow need to uh, pay for it. So that's why this particular bootcamp is a paid bootcamp, and uh, and again, uh, it's also one of the reason because we we believe that only serious people need to come, and uh, again, it's not an open for everyone. If you want to basically just want to join, just uh, tell us the idea what you want to build, and you can then uh, enroll in, in this particular bootcamp because we want. Serious uh, people, and then we'll be building a Netflix. We'll be building a live Netflix, a clone of Netflix in this particular bootcamp from scratch. If you even if you don't have any idea about 
uh, how Netflix were and, uh, and what other tools that we're using, we'll be building Netflix without code. So that, that's pretty much what we're going to cover in this. Uh, uh, and wow. NAS will be the... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Please, please, please. Yeah. Okay, so NAS will be the one who will be teaching you the whole code and I'll take care of the design side and how you can make things look beautiful. Yeah, so to add on here, we have limited seats. We are not taking everyone. Uh, so we have like 12 seats per batch. We don't uh, believe in the quantity. We believe in the quality because we want that you should build a product after the last date with us. And there will be no last date. There will be last date of the session, but there will be no last date for the connection. We will be there to help you guys each and every time your career. So, right. yeah. And and even if you just want to be active in no code community, just let us know, right? Because we do run a uh, community, and there are a lot more free events that we run. So even if you just want to be a part of community, you can still join us. You can still ping us, and we are more than happy to help. More than happy to jump on a call whenever we are free. And uh, yeah, even if you're building yeah. something and you need help, just let us know. We're more than happy to help. Yes, I was coming on to that. Like uh, from the website directly, you can join the community of the no code tool. Uh, if you want to try something or just want to talk, chat with us, yes, just go into the section on join community. There will be a community section here uh, and you can just sign up here with your name and your email address. That's all. We don't need anything from you. So, uh, and if you are a designer and you want to uh, join our design community, that's totally free for you. And that is people who design, I'll just, show you the website so that you guys can join it. So we have the WhatsApp group for easy communication there. So and we have one of we have one of the best designers in the uh, group, which are very active from Swiggy, Zomato, uh, and even Lottie Files, if you have heard about it. So uh, also, fun fact, uh, all these websites you're seeing right now, uh, people who build, bootcamp dot people who build, people who design, all these were built in like weekends without writing a single line of code. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I would uh, like, like to add that uh, you can uh, just to reserve your spot uh, so that we can have calls, you can reserve your spot right now for the bootcamp. And I'll be sending you uh, all of you guys emails, which will have uh, a surprise, uh, the info, uh, more details about the bootcamp and links so that you can book Zoom calls with me where you have any questions, uh, I will be here to help. So yeah, uh, Shashank will show you how you can reserve your spot uh, right away. Yeah. Uh, so since we have limited spots, so, uh, out of 12 for the first eight seats we are giving 50 percent off uh, because we just want committed people we are not much after the money but uh, we want committed people uh, yeah. so yeah exactly so uh, whenever you land on the page there will be two buttons whichever you like uh, just click on it or just navigate to the website and scroll it down and there will be the section about the pricing what will uh, use and how will we communicate and directly go to this reserve your seat reserve your spot or directly payment if you just want to reserve the seat just fill up fill up your fill up your details and proceed to pay that's all that is that's all and we'll we'll be having the zoom call after that yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Please, uh, Rishab. Yeah, and uh, plus the the surprise. Uh, so uh, I'll I'll share my screen with sure, you. Sure. Let uh, me just close that. Okay. Yeah. So where is it? Okay. So okay, you go on. I was. Uh, yeah. So we we were working on a ebook for the past couple of days. Uh, that would help you kickstart your no code journey it's by mayank itself uh, and gaurav one of our partners and all of you guys would be receiving this ebook totally free and some more resources uh, along with the ebook 
uh, in your emails right away after we are done with the session so yeah this was just one announcement uh, plus more surprises in the email yeah awesome uh, uh, can we take some questions now yeah uh, definitely so yeah guys uh, any of you uh, if you have any questions yeah. just raise your hand and i'll hand over the mic to you uh helen is here hi helen hey hi man yeah. can hi team uh, hi again. yeah yeah basically uh, man just to query like you said that you you do a no code piece uh, do something on your you know idea or on your project that you're working on and then go to a you know proper code development why would that transition be required would that be absolutely required or i mean just wanted to be so, curious it, it's not required right so i mean like uh, i'll say that uh, although most of the no code tools don't have limitation on number of users that can you have right but i said that as your company grows right so if you are a startup maybe year 1 year 2 if your product goes more complex right it, it grows more complex in that case you may have to kind of uh, build a product that use that is basically build on both no code and a code a combination of both that's what you are you are building uh, uh, i am building at uh, like vadhani foundation well but yeah so that's what what that will happen because as you grow there will be new features there will be new requirement there will be new areas which you you or your product on which no in that case the transition may require but so how I would the like, but uh, how do no code and the code work together i mean that's i mean that's yeah okay so i think that's showed you about bubble right so i'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about bubble so bubble is not just a no code platform even if you see okay there, there is something that is not possible in bubble you can create plugins you create a plugin you can create a plugin using code and then again using you, you can use it on bubble so it's like it is not only limited to build things without code even if you want to code something even if, if there is some limitation to a no code platform you can always use code to fix it so yeah let's say uh, you want to uh like take a payment from indian uh, payment gateway called razor pay all the bubble supports razor pay but let's say you want to integrate razor pay because you you like razor pay a lot and it it is honest it works but you don't know it so you can build a sub plugin for razor pay and you can use it on your existing no code so it's it's very simple like even if there's something not possible you can create it using code sure so something like an ar vr which is not there currently on bubble So that you you can yeah. develop it somewhere outside and then you know bring it back and do an integration. What you're trying to say? Yeah, look, okay. you can do the integration. Or what you're trying to say. And for AR and VR as well, there are some uh, no code tools called as Captic. Captic is one of the AR VR no code tools that is basically used for e-commerce. I'll say, but even if you want to like you're building something like e-commerce store and you want to show your product in the 3D, then you can use Captic. And the more details will be in the PDF. I think the ebook that Richard will be mailing you. you can see some tools for ai and vr as well sure yeah uh my just to add on here uh, for the first answer first question so even in the development industry the code industry we make transitions from technologies like people transform the back end from like to no code or sorry the node js and the front end is moving to react j react.js and yeah. because it's a fast based industry and coders also have to move the technologies depending on the uh, users and the uh, choice yeah. i think we're moving more towards low code approach okay so like there is one thing called as no code approach and second thing called as low code approach right so there are there are some tools that that is basically exporting code as well like if i talk about webflow like i showed you before right So let's say you build everything on a webflow, and you think that okay, webflow is costly, and maybe I need to build more features. So webflow helps you to export code. You can export the code, you can post it wherever you want, and you can build functionality on top of that. So the purpose is that you don't need to start from scratch. You don't need to if your idea is simple, or maybe if it's complex as well, you can build around 80 to 90 percent of it without code. And let's say if something is not possible, you're not able to build it, then that code is always there. So that's the current situation, but as uh, tools are getting more powerful, which is uh, which they are for the last past one to two years, uh, it will you will not worry because you will not see like because around ninety percent of softwares that are 
type of build on code will be built in no code in next five years. That that's again my assumption, and uh, that's where the industry is also heading. There's, there are more application that is coming to App Store based on now using no code than ever. So, yeah. Thank you, man. Awesome. Can we take uh, more questions? So yeah. somebody is asking, Navneet is asking, uh, sir, I'm 25, 20, 20, uh, 15 years old, uh, currently a student, a student learning Java, but could you use no code tool to build apps? So should I keep learning Java for app developing programming uh, or should I switch to no code? I, I think Maz has already answered the question. So like, Again, like uh, if you also just want to build an application, yeah, come and start a no-code way. Understand what all it takes to build an application. Understand the process. Understand what all is required. And it does not mean again, as Nash already mentioned, does not mean that you should stop coding because you are like at very young age. Fifteen is like a very young age. Right? So you can you can learn the code side by side. Just try a no-code tool, build whatever you want to build, and then try building it with using code. So then you will have a, a much better understanding of the thing. So you should not quit coding, but uh, you should not also wait to learn Java, then to build an application. You start it right away. Awesome. Uh, there is one more question. Is making a product using no code tool more affordable compared to hiring developers? Yeah, it's 70 to 80 percent time affordable. Okay, like uh, as Naz already mentioned that Naz uh, sold India's first no code startup, right? So now I, I'm basically maintaining it. I'm, I'm basically working on it uh, on top of what Naz has already built. So I'm, uh, me and Naz were the only two people who were building a big product for uh, Vanari Foundation. Whereas the, our kind of competitor team was having a 20 team of 20 or 25 other department within the organization was having around 20, 25 developers. But it's like we were moving very fast and we still are building a product without code. So I'll say it saves a lot of cost. It saves a lot of time. And it's, it also saves a lot of frustration because you don't need to now worry about much of the bugs. You can focus more on uh, implementing things. You can focus more on testing things, uh, which previously was not possible. Uh, but now it is more than possible. Yeah. OK. OK. The next question is, uh, would you recommend the bootcamp for someone who has no prior uh, experience in building apps and websites? Yes, I'll recommend because like uh, whatever boot camp that you start, we'll, we'll assume that you don't know anything. We just will basically assume that okay, you have an internet and you have a laptop with you, and that, that's pretty much the basic requirement uh, as far as uh, understanding is concerned. But yeah, uh, like for he also asked, do we have another boot camp for after startup? We, like, we basically run uh, two different boot camps. One is main basically startup focus. One is basically product focus. So the right now the what the shank and showed was product focus, building products without food. The second bootcamp that we also run as a part of the full of build that's got like as it got not scheduled yet, uh, that's going to happen in October, is building a company without food. And it also covers the processes of sales, business development, marketing, how to launch, how to plan, and all those things uh, in that. So yeah. So like these are the only two areas where we focus on right now. And one more announcement, we do have a product a product as an online platform that is going to uh, come pretty soon. And once, once we launch it, we'll definitely uh, let you know. And there we will have some basics of no code as well. Cool. Uh, guys, do we have, uh, do you have a question? You can write to, to us or raise your hand. Uh, we are happy to attend your questions. Somebody's uh, Yash is asking, hey, I have an app in my mind which could send a SOS alert to users. Like, I want to make it for our online college lessons as we have to fill a form to attendance, which is a headache. Uh, like an app, like the app could be downloaded by 60 students and each one could. I guess it's not complete question. Okay, send. Do you want an app? Okay, like so if a teacher is coming, if a teacher is calling some student to send in notification, okay, teacher is okay, notification. Yeah, you, you, you can you can build that. I understand. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about a little like uh, funny example. So we also like 
uh, take online sessions and there is a student that we had called uh, Rahul. Okay, so uh, he actually recorded uh, his facial expressions just uh, like uh, like, and then he uh, after recording, although while this call was going on, he had put his phone just in front of camera so that we can see. Okay, he's he's moving. And so, uh, if that is the use case, yes, definitely you can build it. We, we can like actually send notifications. So, if you remember, I at the end I showed you a platform called BuildFire uh, that that actually supports notification as well. You can also use Glide, but with Glide you also need to integrate uh, one or the uh, another tool for sending notifications. Cool. Uh, do we have any other question? Uh, if you have this, this we can end the uh, session here. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for such an amazing audience. And thank you for the time you have given to us. So yeah, we will continue the networking session. Like we were officially ending the session. If you have any questions or queries, just grab a seat with us, uh, and we'll be able to uh, help you uh, one on one. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Also, also, marketing plugin. Share this on. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and whoever has the highest engagement, I have a like we have a special surprise for you. So uh, keep following us uh, on at the rate people who build. Uh, simple as that, and we'll have something for you soon. Uh, awesome. See you guys. Awesome. Also, you guys. to uh, preserve your spots uh, if you're interested in the bootcamp. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Uh, see you in the networking session. Yes. Soon.